Not a reset, a re-venue. October 28, 2019 by Anna Von Reitz. While everyone is being entertained by the circus of obvious lies and finger-pointing in Washington, D.C., the rest of us have been evaluating the world as it is, and pulling hard for the world that should be. My team and I are being bad-mouthed seven ways to Sunday, and here we are. It's Sunday. Those who are bad-mouthing us and what we have done to shut them down are angry for four reasons, one, their efforts to unjustly enrich themselves at everyone else's expense have been exposed and objected to, two, the nature of the Federal Reserve note as military script, you guys who have lived overseas on long tours know all about that, has been exposed, three, the Pope has to pay his own debts, four, their queen doesn't get to claim any more American assets. From the perspective of the rest of us, all four points are good news. It's only the crooks and the usurping foreign governments who lose. So we will be happy to accept our enemies for the sake of our friends and family, who would otherwise be stuck, again, bearing the brunt of this con game. A great deal has been said and written about the global reset, what this refers to is essentially resetting the game board of currency values, and set up another round of the same old game of currency manipulation. It's just an offer to use the Exchange Stabilization Fund translation, World Currency Value Commodity Rigging Fund in a different way, a way that will impoverish most people on the planet for the benefit of a few. As usual. Of course, those few who are in on it are anxious for the wheels to roll and at least some of them see themselves as white knights, who will spend all their ill-gotten gain on philanthropic projects. That does, of course, skip over the ill-gotten part, which is what disturbs the rest of us who have learned the lesson that the ends do not, ever, justify the means. Numerous variations on the theme have been played out over the last 20 years. On the banker's side, it comes down to an issue of control. They don't care about how much money or where it is flowing as much as they care about being able to control it. Anything that leaves them firmly ensconced in the middleman controller position is fine with them. The problem is that they have not proven to be honest or competent comptrollers and all our efforts to establish and maintain proper oversight of the bankers and brokers have been overcome by blackmail and bribery. So what's a responsible government to do? Reset the game board? Give new players the poker chips with the same old casino operators in charge? That's what the global currency reset is all about. It's not a fundamental change in the game at all. As the Who put it many years ago, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, and pray we don't get fooled again. It is essential that all of us, worldwide, don't get fooled again. It is time to clear the game board and institute new ways of monitoring and disciplining banks and brokers alike. A return to Glass-Steagall is part of it. The actual implementation of a working mutual offset credit exchange system is crucial. The enforcement of anti-monopoly and antitrust law is fundamental. Public access to consumer protection against loan fraud artists, enforcement of anti-slavery and anti-peonage provisions of the public law, and shutting down the private placement trading platforms all play a part. In some total, Wall Street and its evil stepsisters have to be brought to heel, and so must the central banks and the major brokerages and bond and stock issuing agencies, which have all been motivated by profit to engage in criminal activities that are profoundly injurious to living people and the public good. Our demand to bankrupt and liquidate the offending organizations is a first step toward recognition of the actual problem. It isn't that the system is broken. It's a matter of the system being criminal and irresponsible and out of control. It's a matter of employees preying upon their employers. It's a matter of justice being upended, so that criminals run the courts and private, for profit, public policies masquerade as public law. It's time for a showdown, not at the OK Corral, but in the hearts and minds of people throughout the world. Is this how we want to live? Being harassed by our employees? Having our private property stolen and conscripted without remuneration? Having our interests as priority creditors stonewalled under false pretenses? Being coerced into a system of corporate feudalism that makes colonialism look tame by comparison? We don't need a reset of the same old same old. We need a re-venue, a return to the law of the land and to the public law being enforced against the offending corporations. We need a lawful conversion to reverse and remedy the unlawful conversion created by FDR.
And most of all, we need people to wake up and realize that while they may have the right to self-govern, they have to act upon that right and accept that duty before it means anything. Owing to the disgraceful disservice we have received at the hands of territorial and municipal employees, our political status records have been falsified. So the first order of business is to correct these records and declare our actual birthright political status as American state nationals, as per their own federal code, at 8 U.S.C. 1101-A-21. Record your political status documents and land your notice on U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo's desk. And after that, it is up to each one of us to take the next necessary step and accept the responsibility that goes with the right to self-govern, joining our state assemblies and working hard to restore the civilian court system and lawful means of enforcement we are owed. Freedom isn't free. Sometimes it requires action on the battlefield, and sometimes it requires knowing who you are, and sometimes it requires acting upon your responsibilities as an American to exercise your right to self-govern and enforce all the other rights and material interests you are heir to. Nobody can do that for you. It's that lonesome valley we have walk by ourselves, rooted in our self-knowledge, in our sense of justice, and our determination not be be ruled over by self-serving corporations. Some people have misunderstood, accidentally on purpose, my role as fiduciary of the United States of America. Please note that there are supposed to be around 270 million adults in this country, and therefore, around 270 million fiduciaries, instead, when push came to shove, only one lonely old woman stepped forward to do her public duty. While the rest of you slept, I was awake and objected to having our entire portion of the North American continent claimed by foreign creditors of the municipal and territorial governments, with all our property both public and private offered up by the con artists as abandoned property and then also subjected to civil war against us, the actual priority creditors, who would be considered mere unknown tenants and disregarded entities in our own country. So why am I the fiduciary? Because I am the only one who did the job. And, by the way, there's more than enough room for all of you to step forward and do your public duty, too. That action on your parts is long overdue. I am quite elderly and my husband is even older. We do not cherish having our household in a continual state of chaos as we endeavor to meet the needs of an actual government for this country. We don't like being pressed into such service under such hair-raising circumstances, and we don't appreciate the guile and disservice of our employees, either. We are, frankly, wondering what's wrong with the rest of you? Your identity has been stolen. Your credit has been hacked. You are presumed to be holding the bag for all these debts you never knew about and never approved of. And you are just standing there? The willing victim? How fast would you react if someone stole your credit cards and racked up $30,000 in bogus purchases? You want your freedom? Well, God gave it to you, but it's always something you have to earn by accepting the gift and standing up for it and making use of it. Don't put your freedom on a shelf. Don't think that when the guns are silent, there are no enemies sneaking around trying to steal your birthright from you. What they could not take by force of arms, they have endeavored to take by deceit and guile. And they have been unimaginably successful, right up until the point that we denied the Joint Chiefs any plausible deniability for their preparations for civil war. Right up until the point where we addressed the Pope and said, what's going on here? This is you and your family, not just ours, faced with the looming prospect of having foreign mercenaries on your doorsteps, presenting you with bills you know nothing about, bills that were hypothecated against your credit and your assets by treasonous individuals in the municipal United States Congress, pretending to represent you. It is more than high time to present yourselves and give meaning and flesh and power to the American experiment. Declare yourselves to be Americans, now that you have been warned that your identity as such has been stolen. And boot up. Get moving now to build and repopulate your state assemblies in every state of the Union. Restore your own government. Take back your seat of power and kick these interlopers in the butt. We have done the work and done the research to know for sure what happened and when and at whose hands this country has been betrayed. We also know what has to be done to restore the public law, the actual law, not merely the rule of law masquerading as law. So stop arguing and stop wondering and running amok. This is your country. A handful of us have saved it for you and held the door open so that you can come home and can claim your birthright as an American.
do so. We didn't say it would be easy or fashionable, only possible, and dependent on what you do today. Our law team is hard-pressed. Grandma's cupboard is bare. The winter is coming. The country remains operating, unnecessarily, using military script as money, when in fact, we are the principal owners of most of the actual assets of this country and the world. Rank and file Americans aren't the only ones who need to wake up. We are being robbed in broad daylight and those responsible for protecting our persons and property are sitting on their thumbs, trying to figure some dim way to further unconscionably access our credit. Redirecting attention away from a reset and toward a revenue instead, means an end to business as usual and the return of wealth to each country and to the living people worldwide, which also means a whole new basis for funding government operations. As my mother used to sing out early on Saturday morning, wake up. Daylight in the swamps. Donations are needed to keep going forward. I am still acting as paymaster. All our people are continuing to work as volunteers dependent on gifts to get through and keep pressing onward, just as our forefathers had to depend on gifts to fund the revolution. Please help if you can. Please step forward and make the difference necessary to stop corporate feudalism in its tracks. My PayPal is, avanavon at gmail.com and the snail mail here is, Anna Maria Riesinger, C.O. Box 520,944, Big Lake, Alaska 99,652.